Well, I can see a countdown. Yep. Hi, everybody, and welcome to a special live streaming episode of Utterly Unscripted. Today, we are joined by the Hollywood celebrity psychic, Michael Bodine. He's here to talk to us about everything, including his latest book. Michael, thanks so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you. No, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to have you. I've been excited to speak to you since I heard you were coming on the show. And everybody out there watching, uh, we've got a live stream happening on you, YouTube, stream happening on Facebook. There's a few people I can see that are sitting in our audience. They're obviously very interested in hearing what you've got to say. And I just want to let everyone know that if you do want to join, if you want to be part of the conversation, Michael will be chatting with us all directly. And if maybe you'd like to have a reading, if you've got a specific question, you'd like to ask Michael maybe about your career, your love life, something Michael will direct us. <laughs> but you have to join us here on Riverside. Yeah. Have a look at the link. Download the app if you're using a phone or a tablet. Otherwise, click the link in Google Chrome and you'll join our audience. And there's a live call-in button. I think it's at the top of the screen. I'll see it when it happens. <laughs> when you click the button, we'll see it. Michael, thanks again for joining us. Absolutely. It's evening for you. Yep, it's about, yeah, it's 10 o'clock or so, but it's not, it's just starting. So that's good for me. That's good. It's 12.25 here in Australia. So I think we've got a mixture of people from all over the place joining us. But I wanted you to just give a brief introduction, if you would, to the people who are listening. Uh, this will be played back again after the live stream. So tell us who you are and what you do, because you've got an awesome website, but I like to hear it from you directly. Okay. Uh, I'm Michael Bodine. Um, I come from a psychic family. I grew up with, my mother was a psychic. My sisters were psychic and I'm a psychic. Um, I am a, I'm a future kind of guy in that I, I deal mostly with opportunities coming up, you know, um, relationships and job and stuff like that. And the reason for that is because I, um, I'm not a big woo woo guy. Not, mm. that, not that there's anything wrong with it. It's just that um, my sisters are, you know, more into, everything has meaning and life is just a cloud, you know, all that kind of stuff. I'm more, yeah. um, it, it makes it help it for me. It's more about just what's coming up, how you can overcome that, how you can be ready for it and that kind of stuff. And it's interesting to me, you know, the future, cause I can tell if I'm, if I'm wrong and yeah. if, you know, if I suck or something and if, um, cause if, you know, it doesn't happen, then that I suck, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which I'm okay with cause I never really wanted to do this anyway. And, um, but it's just something that's always come to me and uh, I've been doing it for 45. I'm pretty bored with it. <laughs> but you know, I've just been talking to dead people for so long. After a while, you get, you know, <laughs> they get a little boring. Um, I yeah. do a lot of ghost bustings. Um, I do yeah. a lot of possession stuff, you know, stuff like that. I'm not, what is that? I don't use. What's ghost busting? So ghost busting. Okay. So, I'll keep it really simple. There's a theory that when you die, your soul leaves and it goes to another place. But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's this light to the mm -hmm. the occasion go. You know, they stay earthbound. And they, they hang right. out, you know, for a whole bunch of reasons. It doesn't, it could mean for a whole bunch of reasons. But then you get those souls who, after a while, start to get a little bit, and they start to go to people's places. People kind of have what they, what the old psychic used to call the shine. And, and it's like this ability to see spirit uh -huh. or feel spirit. You know, more, they're more in tune to it. You know, like how some people are really good at math, or some people can draw. Yeah. Well, some people have that shine, and and, um, and so spirit, like earthbound spirit, will will go mm -hmm. to those people, you know, because they have a better chance of being seen because they're bored to hell, you know, they're just like they'll do anything, and then they do stuff, you know, they turn on the lights or they yeah. draw their name in the mirror and stuff like that, just to get right. you know attention, and uh, and then you get these stupid ghostbusting people that are just like freaked out because oh my god, a white person. We've all seen the programs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And <laughs> we've watched it all on TV. <laughs> yeah, and, and all it does is take for one stupid ghost to go mommy and everybody freaks out and you know it's a whole yeah. show and 
Um, but it's really dumb. It's really just when you actually, when you go do a ghost busting, you know what it is? It's you just, you have to talk to the ghost and say, Hey dude, mm. what are you doing here? You're dead. You have to yeah. go, you know, you can't be here. And so it's, it's actually more of a counseling thing than it is. It's not a very, it's not very exciting. Right. But I guess the they do that on the TV. Because the ghost or whatever tries to stuff and they, yeah. they throw stuff and they, you know. Yeah, but I mean, it's so stupid. I mean, you know, it, like sometimes, you know, we've been to places where the walls are bleeding. It was really bad. But, you know, basically, you just have to clean up the blood on the walls and then get really good. It's not that, it's not as big of a deal as people think, you know. You yeah. put some spray cleaner, yeah. you get rid of the stuff, and then you talk to the dead guy and you say, hey, you know, dude, you got to go. And, um, and, but people want to get scared, you know, they want to get scared. And what really, yeah. um, what's, you know, I still, I, I have a house um, and I have, I have a ghost in my house. I'm refusing to deal with it because it's like, it's my house. I'm not going to work. Leave me alone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, but, you know, it does. It's, it, uh, it, moves the, it, it plays little kids, you know, music, you know, at the middle of the night. You know, stuff like that. Wow. It's like, you know, I re- I'm just, it's like, forget it. I'm not going to pay attention. Go away. I, I'm not working. Just because um, they're attracted to me because, you know. I, I probably, but you know what? Screw them. It's my, yeah. it's my house. I'm, you know, I'm not going to, they can, I, I'll get some stupid Ghostbusters in there and they can see if they can get rid of them. And if they can't, then of course I'll do it, but. You know, <laughs> you know I, there's a couple of questions on, that guys. sprang from what you were saying, because you you mentioned like, you know, it's a boring thing when people are going and doing the ghost busting. So I kind of was thinking that maybe 90 percent or maybe more of what we see on the shows on TV is people hyping themselves up and getting excited totally. because they want right. to be scared. Like you said, they, they want to be scared. But exactly. then you also mentioned right. that they're drawn to you. So obviously because they know what your gifts are. Now you've been very specific on your website. The types of readings that you do for people are not speaking to your dead mother and father and, and right. that type of thing. It's it, That's not how you work. But obviously you're not able to turn that off 100 percent because you've got a long line of family who have worked yeah, as psych- or it. just been psychic you know yeah yeah is that another is that another thing that are people who are seeing these things are they maybe a little more in tune with stuff that's going on or do the ghosts just fuck with everyone and like it doesn't matter who you are <laughs> Well, you know, it's 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 interesting. Most of, like if you have that shot, if you have that kind of ability, they they will make themselves known. But I usually like to go to house and, and the the one the spouse can see things. And the other one just makes sure I've never seen anything. And, and but that happens all the time. And it's, it's usually the female that sees the stuff. But you know, sometimes it's a male. But mostly it's a female. Um, and, and they mm-hmm. they just choose those people because there's they they know they can get their attention. Um, I don't have, um, so I, I was scared to death of ghosts when I was a kid. I mean, because, you know, the place was lousy with ghosts when I was growing up because we were learning how to do all this stuff and, you know, we were doing, we, we were doing all sorts of weird stuff. And, and so there was ghosts all over the place. And I was terrified. And, um, and I, you know, they wanted me to get over my fear of ghosts and it only made it worse, you know, because I was scared to death. And there was, there was a certain point where, um, like, I wouldn't go to my house alone because I could see ghosts in my, in, in the window. You could see them walking around mm. and I wouldn't go home alone. I would just sit outside and it gets, I'm in a minute. Freezing here. It gets really cold mm. and sit out in the cold and shiver and wait for somebody to get home. And finally, um, I, I mean, think, there's a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of stuff that's happened before all this, but um, um, I just, I finally said, screw it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be afraid of these guys anymore. So I went to the house, you know, I went and walked up the driveway, got to the front door, the door opens by itself, uh, which scared the crap out of me. Um, I walk in and they shut the door behind me. But, you know, I think after, and this was after years and years of being, you know, seeing ghosts and seeing all this stuff happen and all this weird stuff. And um, when they slammed that door, I, 
I got so pissed. I was like, fuck you guys, you know, I'm done. Mm. I'm done being scared. And, and since that time, I was probably, I don't know, maybe 12, I think. Um, since that time, I just stopped being afraid. And so, mm. so my point is, is that the scariest ghost busting I ever did was when Mm. And I walked into some place and I was like, holy crap, is there ghosts all over the place? And I'm looking all over. Now they're very routine. I hear yeah. the same story. In fact, uh, I bring people with me because I can't stand the story anymore. Everybody's got a story. And it's always like, oh my yeah. God, then the lights got turned on at three o'clock in the morning. And I'm supposed to act incredulous, like, what? I've never heard of that. And, um, <laughs> you know, and because they, they need that, you know. And, um, and so. I have people come with me that have never heard the story so they can go, no shit. And, and then uh, I right. and, and get rid of the spirit. But um, because, because I've been in every situation, situation, you know, I have been where, you know, things are coming and, and they're throwing stuff at you and their walls are bleeding and, they're, and the noises and the smells and, uh, you know, all that stuff. Um, but really, mm. it's just, it's about dealing with a soul one-on-one. So I don't, I think they fuck with people because they can. If if you're afraid yeah. or you get all nervous, they love that, you know, because they get a reaction. Mm. I would too. I guess it's the, the energy, of right? It, uh, yeah. Yeah. And so they feed off the energy. I've heard that. You know, that they think. Yeah, yeah, they do. And I mean, in fact, so you know, one of the tricks that um, when I was younger, one of the things we used to do, if we couldn't see a spirit, but we could feel them is you kind of give up your energy. So what, what that means is that all of a sudden you'll start getting really tired, you know? And it's like they use mm. your energy. And then you can see them. <laughs> um, yeah. So when we'd go on jobs, we'd always know when we are going to see one because we'd all get really tired and be like, oh, crap, we're going to see a ghost. <laughs> um, because, you know, they use that. <laughs> but but yeah. they also do that to scare people, you know? And, um, at, you know... People talk about demons. I think they're just asshole people. Um, um, I'm not a big like. I don't. I don't. Right. There's a big debate about the, the whole demon thing. I've been around a lot of negative people, you know, just jerks. But they're they mm. also transfer into dead jerks too. So it's um, so sometimes people think, oh, they're mm. just these evil demons, which they love. You know, they love to be considered demonic because then they then they're kind of a badass. But they're they're just yeah, <laughs> they're just assholes. You know. <laughs> and so um, <laughs> it just boils down to you actually have power over them because they have no, they're dead. Mm. They cut the cord. They're it's dead. yesterday's yeah, news. There's a right. pizza to go, you know? Yeah. Um, and so uh, they don't really have, they have. Yeah. Can we talk about that actually about, sorry, I the, the signal is a bit jobs. bad. I apologize to anybody yeah. who's who's watching there's there's a there's a there's a no, delay no. but um yeah. i think the ghosts are messing with your cell phone signal or or your wi-fi <laughs> your wi-fi signal. they do that every time i do one of these things yeah and it's funny every time i talk to somebody who does the same kind of thing that you do i have no end of problems it doesn't matter which platform we use <laughs> or what what it is that we're doing it just seems to be that the i i call them light workers that's my little generic umbrella term for everybody who works or does this kind of thing they work with the light i guess it's a nice way of putting it sure that's, <laughs> that's that is true we, yeah we do work, yeah. yeah yeah so yeah. but every time without fail i have had problems that they just i don't know what they whether they're fucking with me or they're fucking with you but they're doing something <laughs> but no they and, do that they're, yeah yeah they're, so yeah, i i wanted just all, to talk they about they use a lot of electricity Yes, they do. Um, I wanted to talk about people who do pass over because you mentioned that. So an asshole in real in real life, <laughs> in life, he was, yeah. let's say it's a man. He was an asshole. Then he dies, yeah. he crosses over. The possibility of him becoming an asshole ghost is pretty high then, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. especially if he's staying earthbound, you know, if he's staying yeah. earthbound. Um, there's no, there's no reason for him not to stay an asshole. Um, he's, mm, mm. you know, he doesn't have any enlightenment. He doesn't see the whole picture. He just realizes, Hey, I'm, I'm dead. Um, and yeah. the things that made him an asshole here, um, unless you pass over into that, whatever you want to call it, um, 
they don't really see it. You know, they don't, they just, they don't really see yeah. it. That's interesting, so, yeah, actually, because you are. hear a and, lot of different psychics, mediums, et cetera, who talk about, you know, when you when you drop your meat suit and uh, uh, there's no better way to say it. But <laughs> <laughs> Rose, I know. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Terrible. When you, when you cross the veil, whatever way you want to say it. But but I've heard it a lot. And it, I don't know if it is that airy fairy when people say, you know, you you let go of everything that you held on to in your life. And as soon as you cross over to the other side, all the things that mattered to you or were, were important to you on the earth plane are no longer important that, you know, so you don't just get automatic enlightenment when you cross over. Right. Yeah. You don't me. No, it, um, I, I, I haven't found that to be true. Uh, I found that, um, in fact, it's just kind of the opposite. In fact, a lot of times uh, you have to go through sort of a debriefing. You know, it's like, I think it's to kind of pass over and realize that there is this life after death, but there is this existence and, and all the things that you could have done and what, mm. you, what you put in importance. I would think um, I've run into, you know, countless souls that have had just overwhelming regret because they didn't do the stuff that they, they wish they, it's mm. not like they come out singing Kumbaya and going, you know, with little harps. They, it's, it's a tough realization for some people. Yeah. Um, I, I was, um, yeah. I was, I, I was shopping. I went shopping and, um, and it was, it was late. It was the beginning of winter. And, and so the sky was just kind of that grayish bluish, you know, it was starting to get cold. And I pulled up into the parking lot and there was an ambulance there that was, working on somebody and obviously they were just going to town and there was a bunch of people gathered around and 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 so I parked my car and as I got out they were transferring this person to the um in the and and, and, and wow. so there was people started mowing back into the store and there was three of us standing there there's this other woman and then this guy and then me and we were just kind of looking at each other like wow that was weird and then both the woman and I realized mm. that the guy was the guy that was on the gurney you know the guy that was dead and he was, oh, what do I do? What do I do? What's going on? And she looked at, <laughs> yeah, and she, and she looked at me, scared like, oh crap, I shouldn't be seeing this. I I think she was Spanish, but she started crossing herself, and then she ran into the store, uh. and it was just me and him. And I said, dude, you gotta, you know, you gotta get in the truck. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and and he was, I, he was, just how shocked he was that he was dead, dead. That this was it. There was no. He was it. That was it. That everything that was it. that he could have done. Yeah, that was it. And I think that's what hit me was just how permanent it was and how of a shock that mm. is for him. And he got back in the thing. And oh, then sure. the, the ambulance, the ambulance took off, but the lights, they shut off the lights. So obviously he passed. But um, I remember just looking at him and him, and he, he was in complete shock. He was like, holy mm. shit, what just happened? You know, I'm dead. Yeah, wow. I'm dead. And he didn't yeah. know what to do. Um, and I don't know, you know, whether he passed or not. I didn't, you know, I haven't seen him since, but um, that, that happens to a lot of people. They get, they're just shocked, you know, they're just shocked or, mm. um, or that, and that's one of the things that we were talking about, or I was talking about earlier is the regret. That's mm. seems to, when I talk to spirit that, you know, people have passed, their whole thing is about regret. They wish they would have said even just a nicer phrase to somebody or, or, not spent so much time thinking about money or how they looked or, you know, mm. it was about their character. Mm. That's, that, that's what seems to hit people. And so I would disagree yeah. with those psychics who say that they walk out singing, you know, Bobby Sherman song, songs and Kumbaya. I think mm. a lot of times it's really difficult um, for them because of what they could have done and they didn't do not make yeah. money. I mean, yeah. who cares, but, but how they could have been better to their kids or to their loved. Sure. You no, know? that seems to be I the totally agree. problem. Yeah. So, and, yeah. and they're not evolved, you know, they're still just as dumb as they were when they left, but um, they <laughs> see that. Um, yeah. And, yeah. and they, that's one thing that they do, you know, they do realize is, holy crap, there is some consequences. Maybe, you know, maybe mm. God's not up there going to beat them, but maybe that's their consequences realizing that they could have done stuff that they didn't. And, mm -hmm. um, and that sticks with me, you know, that sticks with me now. Yeah. So, um, uh, you know, when you do little things, it, it just to make a person feel a little bit better. It does make a difference. It, it does. Mm. 
did you receive that? So it's that not about insight? the dough, it's not about the fame. No. Did you receive that insight through your work? Is that how it, how you've come? I love that you've got yeah. this attitude, Michael, I have to say, because I love, I, I'm the kind of person who loves to disagree with people. Anyone who knows me yeah. will know that I just love to disagree with people. So I, always get called out for saying, well, actually, I don't really agree with what you're saying, but I do agree with what you're saying because it disagrees with what I've heard 99% of the time. Yeah. Well, that I mean, how is that possible? Like... I mean, you know, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's and it. I, and you yeah. know what? I, I'm not the deepest kind of guy. So mm. see this stuff is when I experience it, you know, I'm not, I don't, I don't, right. I don't want to be that deep of a guy. Um, and, um, so when I see this stuff, that's how it hits me. That's, and like suicide stuff, like, um, you know, people talk, there's all mm. sorts of different opinions about suicide. In my opinion and in my experience, um, the people that do commit the suicide are kind of stuck. They, they, it's, it seems like mm. they have to stay until the people that they affected by that choice um, have passed too. And now, not in every case, Ooh, that's, but yeah, yeah. Um, but it seems like when they do something like that, uh, when they take their life, it, it, it affects people for the rest of their life. I mean, people think about that forever. And, mm. and I've seen spirit. I've seen people that have killed themselves around that family, around that person, you know, and they're just kind of like, they're stuck. They have to witness the reaction to what they did and they have no, they can't do anything. I mean, yeah. but, you know, it's funny. Yeah. Sometimes after, after a few years, maybe, or after maybe 20 years, and they can see that people are kind of moving on with their lives. They can actually help. And they can actually, um, you know, whisper in their ear from time to time or, or say something and reaffirm mm -hmm. some, if they're having a bad day or something, but I, in my experience, and I'm not, you know, who knows, I could be wrong as hell, but from what I've seen, it's about um, when people commit suicide, generally speaking, not in all cases, but in general, And they kind of have to kind of mm. just hang out with those people that they have these right now. Yeah, it's not just an automatic love, you know, reset. That it doesn't. Um, I don't see that. Now, in some cases, when people yeah. are really sick and, and they're really ill and all that stuff, th there's not that. There's not that sense of them hanging around. But it's a different um, kind. That's a different way of yeah. going, isn't it? It's yeah, yeah, not yeah. as traumatic, I guess. Right, and there, there's closure. People seem to know about that. People seem to understand. But yeah. when there's not that closure, You've prepared the it's way a whole different kind of thing. thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, mm, yeah. Yeah. So is that so, a comfort I, you know, but, to people, do you think? I don't know. I seem to piss some people off when I say it. Yeah. I think they want to believe well, that yeah. their love I, I think they want to think that their loved one is off, you know, just feeling all much better and everything's, you know, great. And yeah. that hasn't been the case with me, you know, um, uh, with no. what I've seen. Um Nor there's consequences, you know. I yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't uh yeah. And who's to say, you know, I'm just going on what I've seen. And, yeah. um, and, uh, you know, there's probably other people that, you know, know way more stuff than I do, but um, your, the, your experience, your, your recollection of you, what you have experienced, especially with people right. who have died by suicide, seems to fit, though, with other clever people who talk about the spirit of someone who has died by suicide where they do tend to have to hang around because, you know, they've, they've done what they've done and then suddenly they're filled with regret. So actually this is, and this is why I piss people off because what you're telling me is when you cross over, you suddenly become enlightened. Well, why is someone who <laughs> dies by suicide any different? They're not, they're not enlightened. Of, of course Let's they realize it. the mistake they've made. But no, it's not just that. It's not that hasn't been my experience. That's just yeah, no, I, yeah. I, I I think it takes a long time to be enlightened. And you know, when people die, some of these jerks that die that are just all about money and they, you know, they die, they're what are you serious? You just walk, you just die, and all of a sudden you're this really cool. How's that? I mean, that doesn't <laughs> yeah. make any sense to me. No. That's no. just stupid. And uh, that's so right. and I don't maybe those people want them to be that, but shut up. That's why you have to yeah. keep coming back, you know. big reading I, yeah I, 
Mm. We are here. Some of the people, you know, you got some yeah. just. You got some of these other. But. Um, they talk about Earth as being kind of like dumb, dumb school. Like, you know, when you, um, when you screw up, you have to go to Earth because it's such a big, it, it's such a emotional planet. And, um, and that, you know, even though people that are, we consider great, they're fucked up people, you know, that God, mm-hmm. he loves Hitler, you know, I mean, they're every different people, they're all working on stuff. And it seems like everybody here is working. Yeah. On yeah. The most successful person in the world. They're probably addicted to the family. You know, they probably. Yeah, yeah. They, they haven't learned how to live a, a complete life. And then the people that's, that seem to learn, they die. Then they, they move on, you know. So you... Yeah. Um, <laughs> so that's, you know, in my way of thinking, it's. Um, yeah, I get I that. I, I, I get that. I, I, un- I can here. totally relate to it. And... More evolved. Yeah. It's not like something you just get a free freaking badass when you die. That would be terrible. It would be terrible. Yeah, it would be terrible. Why so would? Yeah. That's right. We just might as well be dead. Not, not that we want to be dead, that but, but it doesn't make any sense to me, and that's why I call yeah. that shit out. I'm just... Exactly. I'm right. not okay with well, someone being all ambi-pamby and, well, you know, it's all airy-fairy and all this sort of thing. Suicide in particular is a very serious subject. Uh, apparently... Uh-oh, my video happened? stopped. I'm still here, but apparently my video stopped. <laughs> yes, well, it that's, did. That's Way funny. to go. <laughs> yeah. This is the most issues I've had in a long time, but I think it's starting back up again. Okay, good. I'm we'll keep good talking. Okay. Yours is yours yeah. is stopped as well, so that's cool. <laughs> oh, there you are. Yeah, I can we see are. You. Ugh, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> I yeah, like I you know when you when you hear something that's true. Yeah. Um. When you hear something that's true, it resonates with you. It feels right. Right. Yeah. You, and you, I think that's why I get in trouble because, I, oh, I don't like what you're saying. I and look, I am one of those people who, all my life growing up, I have a similar family to you with a psychic grandmother and and even a psychic yeah, grandfather yeah. who sees spirits around all the time. And my sister does the same thing. We don't work as psychics. We just understand right. it. We see it. We you know we've been exposed to right. it. Um, right. And Which so when great. people Which say stuff that's bullshit, I just call it out. I just call a spade a spade. It's very Australian. <laughs> well, that's. <laughs> I wish I yeah. people were Australian then. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Just yeah. take a leaf out of our book. Like I said, suicide is a very serious subject. And of course, if anybody is listening and they have suicidal ideation, I feel like it is an appropriate time to say that there are people who can help you. We're not saying that it's the answer. What we're, we're making light of a very heavy subject. And I understand that some people may be uncomfortable with it, but you have to smile and you have to see some of the serious shit to really understand what life is about. So if you are having suicidal ideation, there's a brand new number in the United States, 988. It started on July 16th. Um, it is the new telephone number for the suicide awareness hotline. So it's uh, a short dial number, 988. You can also chat online with trained counselors 24 7 at 988lifeline.org. If you're in Australia and you are having the same thing, 13 11 14 24 7, um, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 13 11 14 is the number for Lifeline. Can we, we might go, we may go back to that. I, I like talking about shit that upsets people. Um, <laughs> I don't want to upset people, but you know, it, I think it's necessary sometimes, but I do right, want to talk about, here, you've got not? two yeah. best selling books. Yeah, exactly. Um, you've got two best selling books. And in particular, one of them is, well, it's quite popular because if you're listening to this, get over to Amazon and buy it right now. There's only a couple copies left before, before they replenish, the, <laughs> replenish the, the supplies. Yeah. It's a good book. It is, it's about living a psychic life. Thanks, it's, thanks. it's your life. Right. Well, I, you know, I, I have, a, a, I deal with a lot of psychics because now you can't mm. spit without hitting a psychic. And yeah. Um, yeah. And so, and they all have different, 
takes on things. And I'm not, you know, I say live and let live kind of guy, but um, there's a lot of divas nowadays who think that they're the masters and they know more stuff. And, and the first thing that I learned when I was doing this stuff was that the more you learn, the, the more you know that you have so much more to learn. Like there's just mm. so much stuff mm. to learn. And, yeah. and so I find it difficult sometimes to deal with these some people. And when I get into conversations with other psychics, a lot of times they want to show me how big their third eye is, you know, and they want to tell me, show me how great oh, their psychic wow. was. And there's a lot of, <laughs> there's a, there's, there's a lot of good psychics out there. You know, yeah. I suck at a lot of things. You know, I do. I'm not, I don't, I couldn't, I, I just suck at a lot of things. I'm just, yeah. Um, I'm not that great of a psychic, but you know, um, they, but people seem to always want to impress with me, uh, to me, how great they are. And, and mm. that's why I wrote that book it was just because it was like, come on guys, who cares? It's not about the right. messenger, you know, it's, it's, it's not supposed to be about the messenger. It's about, it's about who, what they, what you have to say. It is. And then we all have filters and some of our filters are more. Yeah. I've heard that before. Right. It's just, a, you know, cause yeah. And so, and I believe in, and when, when somebody comes to me, I think they should talk to other psychics too. Um, I just think because we all have different ways of putting somewhat the same thing and whatever, whatever helps mm -hmm. them, you know, it's really about the other person. Um, I think some psychics are really good at certain things and some of them are not like, I can't find mm. my keys half the time, but there's <laughs> people out there that, you know, <laughs> that, yeah. Are really good with that stuff but that's know? their or, strengths and they obviously develop and work yeah, on that and that's what yeah. they are known for doing yeah. you have a long list of clients um who come who come to you um so you can't be yeah. that bad i know you said you're a you know you're not that good but you can't be that bad i'm lucky on some stuff i get lucky yeah. on some stuff yeah <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> i have a really good magic eight ball you know one of those ah. things but I love that. Um, I love the it's magic not uh, me too. Yeah. Um, so I'm a, uh, I'm a, I'm a future kind of guy. And I, mm. I don't. I just, it's old school stuff. You're, there's that whole spiritual thing. You're supposed to let the person come to you. And when they feel right, then they reach out. And, and if they're supposed to get a reading, they will and blah, 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 you know, that kind of stuff. Uh -huh. So um, yeah, that's yeah. kind of the way I, I do it, you know? Um, and um, uh I, uh, yeah, I, I've been, I've been lucky for a little while with my, some of my predictions. Now, you know, mm. uh, I don't charge people unless uh, I, I charge people after the reading because it has to make sense. You know, I might be off that night. I might be, you know, I might, they might understand what the hell I'm talking about. So sure. it's, it's one of, it's just an old school kind of a thing. You know, you have to, it has to make sense. Um, I don't, uh, I, I'm not, um, you know, so, Sometimes uh, people, well, okay, honestly, um, I get a lot of calls for readings and eight or nine out of 10 people that call me, I can't do, not because I can't mm. do them psychically, but because there's just nothing to tell them. Like I can mm. see that there's, I can see that there's opportunities coming up for those people, like new jobs and new this, but I also can see that they're not going to do it, that they're yeah. not, they're not going to take the risk. They're not going to take the chance. And I charge like 300 bucks when I do a reading. I don't charge somebody to join the tell them to join a bowling ring, you know, which is basically oh, yeah. what I end up doing because there's nothing else to tell them because I, I, I know that they're not going to do the things mm -hmm. that they're going to do. But that's why I work with mostly people in the entertainment field, not because they're great because they're not, but because um, I know that when they see opportunities coming, they're going to take them because they, they have to have them. They, you yeah. know, if they see anything coming, they're going to grab it. And so that's why it works for me, not because it's mm. great, because honestly, all the all the stars and all stuff, they have like seven or eight different psychics, you know, it's not like, it's not like that big of a deal to do actors. You're and not exclusive. It's funny, people, <laughs> no, we're not, we're not. I mean, you know, they, they, they're, they're always, they, it's the, it's a psychic of the month kind of thing, you know? Yeah. I just, yeah. I just got into it when I was really young and, and I just kind of built up a, you know. I just kind of built up some clientele. That's how I did it. But it wasn't, it's not that it doesn't make me better or worse than any other psychic because uh, I talk to celebrities. It, it, that actually is mm. really stupid. And it actually pisses me off because it makes me think, yeah. you know, wow, why, what, why do you have such, there's people out there that are doing stuff that, are, that got this, I mean, they, 
they're just doing things and they're making things happen and then and they're humble and, and and those are the people i just love but yeah um but yeah it's it's there's it's, not many it's of them around thing, anymore but, so <laughs> no they're deader than a lawyer's conscience for god's sake <laughs> i'm gonna be a lawyer with a conscience <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm in law school well, right no, now, like but that. I do yeah, have I like a conscience, that. and I I do have a conscience, and I think that is what's probably going to make me a terrible lawyer. I need to go into um, into something that like takes care of people rather than fighting fighting with people. Although I love to fight. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I, I, you know, I I think you're doing exactly what you're supposed to do. I feel that way. Yeah. I do I mean, feel that see. way. Yeah. Um, we, we were talking about this before we started streaming out to everybody. Um, you're happy to do some readings if there's anybody out there. Uh, we had an audience and it just, something happened. I don't know whether it was when we got disconnected, but if you're out there watching, <laughs> click that link. If you're on YouTube, if you're on Facebook, come back because you were here and then you, we've only got two people looking at us at the moment on, on this particular platform. I don't know what you're doing out there on Facebook and YouTube, <laughs> but <laughs> I can't keep clicking between the two things because it's screwing up the screen, but uh, there's a link there and then there's the call in button click the call in button if you're interested because Michael would love to talk to you and I have a little text message from somebody um, her name is Sandia and she's having some legal issues Sandia, cool name Yes, she's she's in Europe. She's in the Netherlands. Um, she's having some legal issues at the moment okay. and things have not turned out the way that they thought that they would. So someone has ripped off an idea that they own the intellectual property from and she's hoping that you will have some insight as to whether or not it will be sorted. I think we got disconnected. <laughs> uh, <laughs> bear with us, everybody. We just dropped Michael somehow. <laughs> oh, this is fun. All right, let's try getting back. Bear with us. Okay, we are. Hello. Going. There we go. You're back. <laughs> oh God! Yeah. That I don't know what weird. happened. Oh, that was. I just as soon as I finished asking the question, you dropped off. It was all. Oh. It was all gone. <laughs> okay. Well, let's see. What do I remember? Okay. Uh, she screwed. Just she screwed for a little bit. Um, mm. There's. Uh, they've. They've gotten a pretty good grip on what they're doing. Um, they've. Um, so in other words, they're they're ahead of the game. They're they're ahead of whatever they sh whatever they've mm -hmm. already kind of set up for. Um, it's gonna be a battle. battle. Let's put it that way. It's gonna be a battle. She, it's, it's not an easy thing. thing. She mm -hmm. they've been sneaking up and they've been working on this thing for a while and um, and they've kind of solidified a lot of things. So it's gonna be tough. She's kind of screwed, but she's also not supposed to give mm -hmm. up. So, um, but yeah. it's it's gonna suck. For a little bit, yeah. I gave you the abridged version. Yeah. I had quite a long, a long message, and I thought that's probably too much to just sit here and read everything. But you pretty much hit the nail <laughs> on the head. I do believe that, um, from what she has said, it's it's something that they've been working on for a long time, and someone has just come in yeah, from yeah. underneath them and stolen the idea and and is telling lies about their experience and whatever. They've engaged a lawyer, so I know that I know that she's at least taken you said seems to to resonate um yeah 
she mm. she can win it, but it's going to take her some time, and it's going to suck. It's going to take you know, time. She's just, yeah. It it's like a squatter, you know. She's got it's like a squatter just moved into her house, and yeah, it's going to take some time to evict it. But it it's not an easy thing. But she's not supposed to give up. Um, that's her. That's the lesson is about not giving up on this one. I've got someone who's trying to join us, but she can't get in. <laughs> This is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> she's just sent a she's just sent a, a chat message saying that um, I wonder if there are other people who are having the same issue. They're trying to get in, and Riverside is asking for a code. I don't have a code, I'm afraid. Um, <laughs> I don't. I don't have a code. I don't know what to give you. <laughs> he wants to have um, a code. I would love to have a code. I, the thing is, I have no experience with, um, yeah, Emma is chatting with us as well. Yes, go ahead. Um, I, ha I have no experience with the, the app. So the, the iPhone app or the Galaxy app, like I just, I don't know how to use it. I, I have trouble using my own phone half of the time. So when someone is sending a message and they're saying, I'm trying to get in and this is the screenshot, Literally, I have zero ideas. <laughs> the link that is published on the Facebook page, the link that's published on the YouTube page is the link that should get you into the studio as an audience member. You don't have to have your camera on. Um, if you do call in, then um, obviously we'll be able to see you, but your, your vision won't go to the final cut. So later on, when we play this back, we won't see you, we'll hear you only. Um, Emma said she'd like to ask a question and she's going to send it to us sure. in the chat window. So please go ahead, Emma, once you've got that, I'll read it out to Michael. Um, so uh, Sandia, as I was saying, she wanted to join us, but it was like 4.30 in the morning when we started out there. So I, I said, look, it's fine. Oh, I'll ask hi. for you. And yeah, <laughs> I said, maybe next time what we'll do is we'll try, I'll get up in the middle of the night and we'll talk to you during the day, which. <laughs> sure. Uh, then you know, we, I can, then or I can stay up in, in the middle of the night too. In the middle of the night. Yeah. 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 No, I there you go. Yeah, I, I'm a, I'm a nighttime kind of guy. Yeah. Oh, are you? See, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a nighttime oh, yeah. kind of guy at all. Emma says, "I'm wondering <laughs> if I should move from the place that I'm in now, and if so, where should she go to? Currently, she's in Los Angeles." <laughs> um. Um. Uh, well, she's gonna move. Um. Uh, oh boy, where is she gonna move? That's a big question. It's a big world out there. Um, it's huge. I do know she's gonna Emma. Move. Come to Australia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Actually, it's pretty soon too, within the next three months. So she's well. That sounds terrible. It's gonna happen pretty fast here. Well, not well. Yeah, kind of fast. Um. Boy, I don't know where the hell she's gonna move. Um. It's funny you said two to three months because say... <laughs> the follow-up question was when do you see me moving? <laughs> yeah, it's it's fairly quick here. I'm not getting any anything about... Uh, so when I don't know, I just end up guessing to myself. It's like I start picking out cities and is that it, is that it, is that And I don't want to go through the whole world So because no, it's a pain. But um, uh, God, it's a pretty simple question though. Um where the hell is she gonna move? I don't know. I um, wonder. Oh, okay. So, yeah. will it be? Could it be the U.S. or Canada? <laughs> Emma, maybe if you. So, Michael, you may have missed at the beginning. Michael needs a uh, very specific intention. Oh, it's Canada. There you go. I don't have to explain yeah. anything. To yeah, you. It's Canada. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. No, it's Canada. I so couldn't Emma? figure it out. I live right yeah. by Canada. Yeah. So I know. You. Uh, yeah. Actually, yeah, you it's said Canada. You were there. She's supposed to move to Canada. Actually, she was supposed to have moved there a while ago. What the hell is going on with her? Why didn't Tell she us move? more, Emma. Huh. Yeah. Well, no, she was supposed to have gone a while ago. She's just been dragging her feet. And I, you know, mm. I get that. But yeah, she was supposed to have gone a while ago. Oh, I totally yeah. get that. Yeah, I totally get that. I've been 
Um, yeah, me too. Thinking about traveling a lot. And of course, with COVID and all of the, the lockdowns and stuff, we've only been out of lockdowns recently. I know. Um, and it's been, it was really strict here in Australia. Emma, you're so welcome. And, um, but I've, I have been thinking about it. I've been thinking about it a lot, actually. I, I used to work in travel. I used to want to yeah. travel all the time. So every few months I was picking up and going somewhere else and, you know, COVID shut that down for me. But I've been thinking about it and it's, I, I get the whole <laughs> dragging your feet because there's war and everything is so friggin' expensive. And yeah, it's crazy. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm it doing is. a law degree. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Well, you're, yeah. yeah. I, I'm in my second year now. I've You're got it all like planned that. out. I know what I'm, I know what I'm, I want to do, but I also know that I do not want to work in Australia. Weird, isn't it? Well, you no, know, it makes sense. Um, mm. I don't think you're going to, but um, uh yeah, but you're in Europe though. It seems like you go to London or something like that. It's weird. That's possible. You're in a different spot. Yeah. You're in a different spot. Yeah. You'll see, but Funny, it's, yeah. it's, um, yeah, New York, London. Yeah, you'll see. It's interesting. You're mm. kind of all over the place. You kind of. Uh, I am all over the place. That's funny. Yeah, you know, because when I first started my law degree, uh, my intention was I wanted to work for the uh, Brooklyn or Bronx or Queens District Attorney Office, but yeah, because well, I'm not a citizen, I can't do that. <laughs> Well, but you are going to visit there and you are going to talk to those people and you're going to work maybe an intern or some weird thing there, but there is something there. Um, okay. There's something there uh, because you do, you do do stuff in New York, but yeah, I don't know. It's fishy. Mm. Not fishy. It's just, um, you're kind of, um, yeah. You're just it's totally it. me. I get it, Michael. No one can ever pinpoint anything because I am truly international. And when you I are, found you're out a jitterbug, because, man. Jesus. Yeah, I am a jitterbug. Yeah. Because I'm not a citizen. I realized that, you know, I couldn't do what I wanted to do, which was to be a district attorney or an assistant district attorney. I didn't want to actually be the district attorney, but I wanted to do that kind of work. And when I found out I couldn't, I had to reassess why I was doing this law degree. It was a perfect, it was wonderful for me. It was a lesson because what I had originally set out to do wasn't actually going to happen. There was, there's no way I can make that happen, at least not before I'm retiring age. Right. I mean, it, there's every possibility to become a citizen. You know, I could, I could do all of those things, but in the meantime, there's a pro probably a period of like 15 years that I have to work <laughs> before I'm going to get right. to that stage, you know? So I started looking into doing the solicitor's qualifying exam in London. Mm -hmm. And also I, because I'm a European citizen, I have a European passport. So I no. considered maybe I would do something in the Netherlands because I have a Dutch passport. So, cool. <clears throat> excuse me. So there were a few options, but definitely I did not see myself staying put. I've never had roots in Australia, if that makes sense. My family are migrants no, it makes, to Australia. Yeah. So, yeah. No, it, it makes total sense. You're it's just there for right now and then you're out of there. Yeah. Yeah. Just here for right now because I have to be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, but it's, it's, yeah. You know what? I do have a time problem, though. Um, I was thinking this was an hour, and I have, to, yes. I have another little thing coming up. Um, Not a problem. God. We've, we've no, got I this. know, but I, you know, I would love to sit and chat with you. Um, it, was supposed to, it was supposed to be an hour. You're perfectly, you're absolutely but right. No, but I mean, it's just, uh, yeah, I, I, but I, yeah. We were, um, late to, we were late to start because of the whole technical issues that we had, so... It's not an issue at all. And now we've got people who are trying to get in and ask questions and they just, I can't get them in. So what I want to do, if we could put a pin in it and yes, I would I love, love to invite stuff. you back at another time. Yeah. Yes. Because I, I feel like this would be an awesome episode if we can just sort out these technical issues. And I know that there are people Perfect. who are interested. I've been promoting this on TikTok and on YouTube, uh, not on YouTube, on Facebook. I've been out there tell selling it to people and saying, come on, come and talk to him. And now we just can't get anybody <laughs> in the damn room. All these people right. who said, yes, I want to talk. I want to be there. And they can't get here. So for those people who feel like they're going to miss out, if you would agree, I would love to have you back. We'll organize, I'll organize it with your PR people. Um, okay. Or, well, now I have your phone number. You're never getting away from me, Michael. I'm glad. I'm glad. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, I want to know what the hell is going on with you. 
<laughs> for sure. I would yeah. love to have you back. Um, but let like I said, because we've had all these technical issues and it's pissing me off. Like <laughs> I know. It's a weird thing, yeah. It it happens. It happens. And like I said, I brought it up with support. So let's hope that we can get something sorted out. I would Perfect. love to do that. It's been a pleasure okay. speaking to you. Anybody who's listening, to to you too. get across to michaelbodine.com. His books are available there. They're available on Amazon. Two copies left of the latest book. So do not miss out. Okay. Thank you, Michael. It's been an absolute Thank pleasure. You very Thanks, much. everyone. Thanks. Bye. Take care.